Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Deborah Carr in this pleasant lead on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a novel by Anne Crone called This Pleasant Lee, a story by a fine young Irish novelist about her own country, not only appropriate to our coming celebration of St. Patrick's Day, but a winsome evocation of that land beyond the sea whose ties with this country are so warm and fond. To anyone like myself who once lived in Ireland, Miss Crone's tale comes like a personal reminder of happy days amidst hills and glens, the blue smoke curling up from the turf fires, a soft rain from the sea, and the lilting voices of people who are surely among the liveliest and most lovable in the world. To play the part of our heroine tonight, we have an actress whose charm is utterly worthy of the occasion, Deborah Carr. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, that hallmark on the back is your guide. Like the sterling on silver, it's a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize. And it tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Our star tonight, Deborah Carr, can currently be seen with Robert Taylor and a cast of thousands in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor production, Quo Vadis. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Anne Crone's This Pleasant Lee, starring Deborah Carr. <laughs> Derry Gawley is in Ireland, which is full of dreams. And Derry Gawley School is a small grey stone building whose young mistress has one of those dreams in her dark, troubled eyes. For the school day is ended, the children have gone home and she is alone. On an impulse, she picks up a stub of chalk and writes a name on the blackboard, a man's name, Matthew. But Matthew doesn't exist except in the dream. It's time to lock up again, Matthew. But I don't want to go home. Mother and Millie will be waiting for me, and there'll be more talk and tears about my brother, as if poor Frank didn't have a right to marry. I wonder, will it be the same when my chance for love comes, if it ever does? Oh, Matthew, will you ever come to Derry Garley? Will you find the old dirt road which winds through the leaves from Castle Rivington to Loch Erne? And will you think to stop at the old schoolhouse beside the road? You must, Matthew. One day you must. Miss Faith? Oh, Mr. Liddell. I was looking for you to walk past my farm, Miss Faith, and when I didn't see you, I was worrying. I stay late, Mr. Liddell. I'm locking up now. Miss Faith? Yes? You may blame me for being bold. But I wanted to talk to you about the way things are going for you and your mother. What things, Mr. Liddell? When I look at your farm so run down, your fields gone to briar, your potato crop dying, and the turnips gone to weed. I know. Uh, the past year, my brother's interests have strayed elsewhere. Then he needs reminding, Miss Faith. Perhaps if I spoke to the young man, it's not right he should be careless of your mother's farm. You're very kind, Mr. Liddell, but we'll manage. There's no need for concern. Your family is my concern, Miss Faith. I've spoken to your mother. 
I've asked for your hand. Mr. Liddell. I've courted no other girl. I know not the tender words to speak. But I do love you, Miss Faith. And I want you for my wife. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Liddell. I... I cannot marry you. You cannot? I don't love you. But perhaps in time, since you know my feelings. I thank you for the compliment, Mr. Liddell. I own two farms, Miss Faith. There would be no lack. I'm sorry. Then there is another. Yes. Oh. Oh, your mother didn't tell me. My mother doesn't know. I've told only my sister, Millie. Please forgive me, Mr. Liddell, but now I must get on home. Yes, of course. I wish you every happiness with him, Miss Faith. Every happiness. Mother, take him to bed and cry and it'll do no good. Oh, it's thinking about your poor dead father I am. Providence took him before he saw this black day. A man respected in all Delhi Golly, and his son would stoop to marry the likes of Lily Dolan. Now, Mother, please, have you been quarreling with Frank again? Oh, there's ruin in that boy. Three lovely farms your father left us. And one by one, Frank and his stubborn, foolish ways have lost them for us. This is our last true faith. And Frank and his Lily will take even this from us. He can't, Mother. The farm belongs to you. It's not his to lose. Now then, I want you to get up and fix your hair. Millie's brewing tea. Ah, oh, you're a good child, Faith. You're young and handsome. It's you who will save us from charity. Mother, you may as well know it now. I've refused Mark Liddell. Hey. I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, Miss son will throw himself away with a bad match, and you... You will have none at all. Oh, Mother. He's ready, Faith. All right, Millie. Oh, Providence spared your father the disappointment of his children. Your cup's on the table, Faith. Thank you, dear. Millie. Yes? Am I being selfish? No. One day Matthew will come. Uh, I've told myself that for so long. What will he be like, Faith? His eyes will be dark. And he'll be tall and quiet. When he talks, he'll look at me in a certain way that only I will understand. In the evening, we'll sit under the big tree down by the brook. And we'll watch the moon rise over the hill. Will he come from some far-off place? Perhaps. And he'll be rich. Ah, oh, Millie. He has to be rich, so he can pay Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Fletcher? Millie, you were not to tell. Mother, what is Mr. Fletcher to do with oh, us? Oh, I, it's Frank that brought me to it. He wanted the money. And how was I to know it was for, for Lily Dolan? Mother, you borrowed from Mr. Fletcher? I thought I could pay it back. Now the note is due. And our farm is as good as... Lost? No. Perhaps he'll give us more time. Oh, child, I've no courage to go to him. Then I will. Oh, it will do no good, Faith. Mr. Fletcher is a solicitor and, and a city man. And the city men know not of us country folk, except to lend money and take the land when we cannot pay. Nevertheless, I'll still go to him. When, child? Tomorrow. <laughs> morning. I've come to see Mr. Fletcher, please. Oh? And your name? Faith Story. I right, want you come in, Miss Story. Thank you. Ah, now, what can I do for you, Miss Story? What? Oh, but you can't be... <laughs> you wanted to see my father, but since he isn't in, perhaps I'll do? Well, uh, I... I came about the money my mother had borrowed. If we can have a little more time, I'll pay it back out of my salary. You work? Miss Story? I teach school at Derry Garland. Oh, that's remarkable. What? Well, I imagine that our schoolmistresses were old and quite plain. Oh. 
Perhaps I should come back another time. Uh, that won't be necessary, Miss Starry. My father would be glad to help your mother in any way possible. Oh. He said that before. Oh? <laughs> no, a third time. Oh, excuse me. I... Oh, then uh, I'll be gone. Well, I- I'll walk you to your car. Oh, no, please. I. You see, uh, I don't have a car. We're country people. What? How did you get to town? I walked. The whole four miles? Well, then I'm going to drive you back. Oh, no, 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 you must not. not. Why not? I haven't a thing in the world to do today. Besides that, I can see that school of yours. Oh, yes, I really must get out in the country more often. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Miss Starry? Miss Starry, you haven't heard a word I said since town. Oh, but I have. Well, then what are you thinking? That the sky has never been more lovely, nor the hills and leaves more green. Miss Starry, next Saturday there'll be no school. And if you've no other plans... Oh, this is our farm. You can let me out here at the gate. Miss Starry. Faith, I, I've got to know when I can see you again. Well, you said next Saturday. Oh, splendid. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. You've been so very kind. I'll turn next Saturday, then. Say, oh, say. Millie, did you see him? Yes. Oh, say, is it... I think so, Millie. And yet... And yet I'm not sure. I just don't know. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of This Pleasant Lee, starring Deborah Carr. You can always count on friendly help from the fine stores where Hallmark cards are sold. The folks who sell them are used to receiving unusual requests and take pride in helping you find the card that fits your specifications. For instance, recently I heard about a mother who wanted a card her daughter could send to a teacher who had helped her make up some schoolwork. She had always heard you could find a Hallmark card for every person, every occasion, and she was not disappointed. It was fairly easy to find exactly the right one in the Hallmark collection of thank you cards, complete even to a big red apple on the cover. So whenever you have a special problem, a particular person or an unusual situation, count on the folks behind the counter to help you find the card. And count on a Hallmark card to help you say what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And remember, in addition to the message inside the card, there's another message on the back of the card that is always appreciated. It's that well-known hallmark which tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of This Pleasant Lee, starring Deborah Carr. In the weeks that followed, the young schoolmistress of Derry Gawley saw more and more of Anthony Fletcher. Everyone watched the growing romance between them, especially the girl's mother who wished it to prosper, and Mark Liddell, who found in it his own bitter disappointment. Then one summer evening, Anthony called again at the farm on the hill. He and Faith crossed the moonlit fields to the big tree which stands by the side of the brook. She turned her dark eyes to him and waited. Faith, you must know what I want to say. I... I think so. Since the moment I first saw you, I've been in love with you. Can you believe that? Yes, because it happened to me, too. Oh, my darling. I I want to marry you. I want you to know that, that that I'm perfectly sincere and, 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 and that you can trust me. Anthony, there's something wrong. Alan, please, what is it? We'll have to wait a while, Faith. To be married? Yes. 
I don't have any money of my own, but as soon as my father makes me a partner, I'll have a good income. Anthony, if we love each other, money doesn't matter. Doesn't it? Oh, Faith, you, you don't understand how things are in business and about life in town. People have different ideas there. I see. Anthony, you haven't told your father about me, have you? No, don't look away. You've never introduced me to your family or to your friends. You've never even taken me into town. Faith. Is it because you're ashamed of my family? That you aren't quite proud of me? Oh, darling, I love you. All, all I ask is that you wait for me. Now, is that too hard? It will be hard. But I've never expected love to be easy. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, my dearest, and it, it won't be for long. We, we'll still see each other. Yes. Anthony, next month the fair will be in town. Will you take me? If you want me to, darling. I do. Oh, Anthony, don't let me doubt. I love you so much. So it's to the fair, is it? Ah, then child will make you a fine new dress. Your Mr. Fletcher must be proud of you. He must, Mother. I want him to be so very proud. in the letter, Faith? He can't see me this Sunday. But next week, surely. And the fair? He... He doesn't mention it. My dear Faith, can you forgive me? Father is sending me to Belfast on business the day before the fair. Oh, Faith. Well, it's all right, Millie. We'll go to the fair anyway. You and I together. The game of skill, ladies and gentlemen. Sign you up. Three fixes for a penny. Oh, could we, Faith? Could we play one game? Well, perhaps just one, dear. No more two, sir. All right, I try it. Excuse me, Alison. Faith, look, it's Anthony. Lily, come away quickly. He said he would be in Belfast, and he's with another girl. Has he a sister? I... I don't know. Please don't talk to me, Millie. Let's just go home. Good evening to you, Miss Faith. Mr. Liddell. May I step in a moment? Why, of course. I'll tell Mother you're here. Miss Faith, it's you I talk to. I've not the heart to tell your poor mother. Oh? Well, she's a good woman, Miss Faith, but too loving to a son who does not deserve it. If only she'd come to me while there was still time. Mother came to you? I'd be so hearted if she'd gone elsewhere. It seems she gave a note to cover your brother's debts. I know. To Mr. Fletcher. Aye, and he sold the note to another gentleman. No. No, Anthony wouldn't let him. Miss Faith, the farm is to be foreclosed. There's no stopping it. I see. But you'll not want for a roof. I've that farm near the school. It's without a tenant. You and your family are welcome to its use. Uh, you're very generous, Mr. Liddell, but we couldn't. I expected that answer, Miss Faith. But... I, I'll not try to buy your affection. It'll be a business arrangement. I've been to Castle Rivington and had young Mr. Fletcher draw a police. Then he knows everything. Oh, couldn't you have gone to someone else? Miss Faith, there was no other solicitor, and he was most kind. When he knew I would see you here, he gave me this letter. Oh, thank you. If you'll excuse me, please. My dear Faith... It's best for you to know, without further delay, I am engaged to be married. Her name is Alison Greenleaf. Mr. Liddell? Yes, Miss Faith. If you're still willing, Mother and I accept your offer. Accept it, Miss Faith, but not with such sadness. Yes, you're right. We should be happy, shouldn't we? There's always a solution, isn't there? A new home. 
a new life. And I'll even be closer to the school. Take your seats, children. No whispering, please. The children are growing up, Matthew. Time is passing for them and for me. I've waited so long for you to come. But will you ever? Or are you only an empty dream? Miss Dory! Miss Dory, there's somebody knocking. Oh, oh thank you, Ellen. Faith. Anthony. I've got to talk to you, Faith. Close the door, would you? Faith, I've... I've come to tell you that I'm free. Alison has broken our engagement. Oh. I'm truly sorry, Anthony. You are? Oh, but Faith, don't you understand? I've, I've come for you. I never loved Alison. Father wanted the marriage, and now he knows it can't be. I, I won't let him stand between us any longer. He never stood between us, Anthony. Not really. It was you yourself. Well, I was wrong, Faith. I admit that. But the past is past. Now, if you'll only forgive me... I forgave you long ago, Anthony. I simply loved with a different love than yours. Well, then give me another chance, Faith. I, I can't lose you again. But you have. A woman cannot love weakness. She can merely pity it. I've much to thank you for, Anthony. To thank me? Once you decided my life without my permission, and now you've given me a chance to choose for myself. You've set me free to love again, to go to a heart finer and truer. Mr. Liddell. Your sister Millie said you might be here under the big tree by the brook. Yes. I've loved it ever since I was a child. I hope the new owner of our farm won't mind if I come here sometimes. I'm sure, Miss Faith, that she won't. She? Is it a woman? It is. She's your mother. My mother? I bought it, Miss Faith, and I've made a deed of it to her. Now that I'm leaving, there's no harm in her knowing. Mark! I'm going away, Miss Faith. I'm not coming back. Oh, no, you can't. I have to. There's nothing to keep me here. There's everything. This is your home. This bit of Ireland, the farm where you were born, the hills with the moon rising over them, even this tree, this brook, this pleasant lee. Here is your happiness. There can be happiness only when it's shared. Miss Faith, once I came to your schoolroom, I told you of my love, and you refused me. You said there was another. There was, yes. In my dreams, his eyes are dark, and he is tall and quiet. And when he talks, he looks at me in a certain way that only I can understand. Every evenings, we'll sit under the big tree down by the brook, and we'll watch the moon rise over the hill. Faith. Oh, Faith, my darling. Yes, Mark, yes. Dreams do come true.
James Hilton will return in a moment. Sure, and it does the heart good to hear those lilting Irish melodies. Even more, it does the heart good to be remembered in an unexpected way. Like receiving an unexpected St. Patrick's Day greeting from a friend. If you like the sparkle of laughing Irish eyes, you'll surely like the special Hallmark St. Patrick's Day cards now waiting your selection at fine stores across the country. Here are cards bright with Irish sunshine, gay cards, witty cards, cards that touch a special chord in your heart. And each one is designed with the good taste and beauty you've come to expect from cards having that familiar hallmark on the back. The greens are greener, the whites are whiter, and the words are just what you want to say, said in just the way you want to say it. So tomorrow, why not stop in and select some hallmark St. Patrick's Day cards to send to your friends this St. Patrick's Day. They'll surely appreciate your thoughtfulness in remembering them, and you'll enjoy the comfortable feeling of doing something unexpected and pleasant. And remember, there's added pleasure in receiving a card having hallmark on the back, for that means you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. For all of us on the Hallmark Playhouse, thank you for a darling evening, Deborah. Now tell me, how does the Scottish lass make such a lovely Irish Colleen? Sure now, and they're the next of kin, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, though, I, I feel doubly close to the Irish because an Irishman had a great deal to do with my getting started on an acting career. Really now, and how was that? Oh, my. <laughs> well, both my first role on the stage and my first role in pictures were in plays by George Bernard Shaw. Ireland has certainly given the world some wonderful writers as well as wonderful people. And this time of the year, I think you'd have complete agreement on that, Deborah. Oh, yes, around St. Patrick's Day, everyone has a spark of the Irish. And after seeing those gay hallmarks in Patrick's Day cards Frank Goss was telling us about, it's no wonder they're such fun to send and receive. Well, we the hallmark family do try to add to the pleasure of holidays. And speaking of pleasure, we have very pleasant news about our Hallmark Playhouse story for next week and our special guest for them. Oh, tell me about it. Next week we shall present Laura Hillier's Time Remembered, a moving story of a family and its efforts to meet the challenge of life in our world today. And as our star, we shall have the delightful Jane Wyman. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The role of Anthony tonight was played by Lamont Johnson, and Whitfield Connor was Mark. Anne O'Neill played the mother, and Joan Ray was Millie. You are invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame every Sunday afternoon on television. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Jane Wyman in Lawrence to present Jane Wyman in Laura Hillier's Time Remembered. And the week following, R.E. Gould's Yankee Storekeeper. And we've invited Lionel Barrymore to star. And the week after that, Marjorie Sharp's Lisa Lillywhite on the Hallmark Playhouse. Stay tuned for Mr. Chameleon, which will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.